What are the steps of an objective research to identify a problem that you want to solve? In our previous video, we investigated how Airbnb started their business to solve a problem. In this video, we will dive headfirst into how an aspiring entrepreneur can address such problems via research by taking the case study of Duolingo, the most successful language learning mobile app today. They have 3.3 million paid accounts as of August 2022 and are currently valued at $3.4 billion. Yet, their master growth hackers continue to target a mind-boggling 1% improvement every week. Their key tool? Research. At its core, research is an attempt to answer a question, such as, how do I get users to flock to my app for downloads or paid subscriptions? Or, how do I get users not to churn or unsubscribe to my app? When you know how to properly do research, it's much easier to answer such questions effectively, rather than proceed purely on gut feeling. Disclaimer: We genuinely believe good gut feeling is important for a business, but that comes from a combination of experience, successes and failures, launching startups and scale-ups, and yes, research experience. Back to research. Start by framing your question to help you elicit specific answers. What is it about my app that is stopping more users from downloading or subscribing? Duolingo ask themselves similar questions all the time, often with the most unexpected answers. Brainstorm to create a list of problems stemming from that question. Our current subscription model may be too pricey or prohibitive for customers. Feel free to make the most of your private life and work experience. You will certainly have used your fair share of problematic products and services before, so leverage that. Moreover, you may have witnessed some key decisions, good or bad, during your professional career, which will have had impacts on your employer's business and their product or service offering. If so, leverage that as well. Once the research problems have been listed, ask yourself the following questions about each one before investing more time. What will the customer's life be like once the problem is solved? Is the customer going to crave a potential solution to the problem? Why does the problem exist? Is this problem worth solving? These four key questions will help you determine the value to cost ratio and priority for solving each problem. We will expand more on how best to answer these in our next video. If confident that a problem is important enough to merit further investigation, then go macro level first. Understand everything about the problem, the industry, and the trends surrounding it. Find key sources. Consult published market study reports books, papers, newspaper articles, historical records, or any other credible sources that could be helpful. Take notes on your sources. Add your thoughts and elaborate on the notes. Understanding the current state of knowledge and experience in the industry will crucially help you identify gaps. These will most likely be issues which the rest of the industry is either ignoring, unaware of, has not yet attempted to solve, or has tried to do so but with variable, unsatisfactory success for customers. Words of the wise, you can often inspire solutions from other industries in the way they chose to solve similar problems and to adapt said solutions to your context. Yet often, the problem will be specific to your industry and product or service, so you may need to design custom surveys, interviews, focus group studies, and or A-B tests to investigate it. Each of these requires careful design with clear outcomes and metrics to measure performance. And when conducted properly, and the data from them processed, analyzed, reported on, and actioned, they can do wonders to your sales. As for Duolingo, their chief strength is A-B testing, i.e. tests of how a particular proposed product feature or modification is received by end users. Duolingo has already completed 3,000 A-B tests to date and counting. Some of their simplest test ideas have yielded improvements of 1.5 to 20% in daily active users, or DAUs. Their guiding principle, no question, is too small to ask. The same principle applies to well-designed surveys, interviews, and focus groups. Critically, there must be a strong feedback pipeline between the research and decision-making teams, as research objectivity protects a business from personal biases and outdated or bad practices. As Gina Gotthilf, VP of Growth at Duolingo puts it, instead of leaving decisions to opinion or egos or background, we let the metrics make the vast majority of decisions. 
By extension, this means that research should happen constantly to ensure a business remains current and is always pushing frontiers in solving problems better than its competitors. It is a lesson which Duolingo has understood better than most and explains their explosive growth. Just ask Gotthilf. She did oversee their growth from 3 to 200 million DAUs after all.